Hi gang! I finally bought a CR10 3D printer so I can branch out in the kinds of things I can make or make things more easily. In case you're curious about 3D printing or want to get into it, I'll show you how it works, some modifications I made, and some things I printed. I bought the printer from GearBest.com. It came at a very reasonable price, around 385 US dollars. I picked the CR10 because it's a good quality printer at a low price. I considered other inexpensive printers like the ANET A6 and ANET A8, but those require modifications to get better quality, which a lot of people enjoy doing. But I wanted to focus on what I needed it for, and so I figured I'd skip all those modifications. I followed this video from the Tiny Machines 3D channel to assemble it. I went through it carefully, so it took me around two hours. There's a link to that video in the video description. How does it work? We start with a spool of some sort of filament, PLA in this case. The filament is forced between these two rotating parts, one of which is turned by a motor. That both pushes and pulls the filament down a tube, to what's called the hot end. It sometimes pulls the filament back, for when it's moving from one area of the print to another without printing anything. At the hot end, the filament is melted and comes out of a nozzle as a very thin stream of plastic. A typical temperature for PLA for this hot end is around 220 Celsius, or 428 Fahrenheit. That process is called extrusion. The filament is being extruded out. The fan here then cools the melted filament quickly to harden it again. Layer by layer, this melted filament is laid down, each layer fusing with the layer below it to create a 3D object. The filament is laid down on the bed. The bed is an aluminum plate, and in this case it has a glass plate on top of that. To help the filament stick, there's a rough material on the glass. As you can see, the material gets used up sometimes when you remove parts. Once I got the hang of it though, with care and luck when removing the parts, I've printed around a dozen times in this area so far. This yellowish material came with the printer, and a substitute is blue painter's tape. On this CR10 3D printer, the bed is heated too. These wires go to a heater attached to the underside of the aluminum plate. That makes it easier for the first layer to stick, and keep whatever you're making in place. To make all this happen, you need some motors. On the CR10, one motor moves the extruder's hot end from side to side. That's called the X-axis. This motor is for the Y-axis, which is moving the bed back and forth. And this motor turns a big screw, which raises the hot end after each layer is finished. That's the Z, or Z-axis. The electronics that controls all this are in this separate box. So you'll need to make sure the cables which go to those motors are free to move as they want. As well as going to the motors, the cables also go to tiny switches for each axis, called limit switches. The limit switches are there so that when something hits them, the switch is closed. That tells the electronics that that thing has reached the limit of how far it should try to go. So far I've made only two modifications to this printer. The first is this filament guide, which I downloaded from thingiverse.com. There's a link to it in the video description. Without it, the filament goes pretty close to this greasy lead screw. But once the filament guide is snapped into place, the filament is kept away from the screw. There's also a handy clip to keep this cable from dangling. The second modification is this cardboard tube for holding the filament spool. The original one wasn't long enough for the spool I'd bought. A very simple solution was to cut a cardboard tube from a paper towel roll in half, and then again lengthwise. I then removed one of the nuts from the original tube, and wrapped the cardboard tube snugly and evenly around it, and taped it in place. I also wrapped a few layers of tape on the end, to keep the filament spool from sliding off. This solution couldn't have been simpler. I won't go through all the details of setting up for printing, since the Tiny Machines 3D video I mentioned does such an excellent job with that. Instead I'll go through a quicker version. First is what to print. I designed most of my own parts using Blender, the same free 3D modeling and animation software I use for my videos. There are all sorts of other programs for that too. A higher end one I hear a lot about is SolidWorks. Let us know in the comments what you like to use. You can also download things from websites like Thingiverse.com, like I did for the filament guide. In any case, you'll now have an STL file or an OBJ file or something that your slicer program uses. The slicer program takes your file and converts it to something the printer can use, as well as does a bunch of other things specific to your printer and print job. For the CR10, we usually use Cura. For example, here I tell it I want only 20% infill, meaning that the object doesn't have to be very strong, and so it should be filled inside with only 20% of plastic. The result of that is a G-code file, which goes on a micro SD card to give it to the CR10 printer. I then use the controls to tell it I want an extruder nozzle temperature of 220 degrees Celsius, and a bed temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. I then go back to the info screen to wait for the temperatures to be reached. Next I load the filament. It can take a bit of work getting it through the motor section. 
I push it all the way through the tube to the hot end. Some filament starts dripping from the hot end's nozzle. It's too hot to touch, so I use pliers to clean up the end, until no more drips out. Then I level the bed. I'll leave those details to the Tiny Machine 3D's video. But basically I'm making sure the bed is level, and that the nozzle is so low that a piece of paper will barely slide between it and the bed. That means the first layer will be pushed into the bed, and stick to it. Finally I make sure it knows that I inserted the microSD card, and select the G-code file to be printed. And off it goes. Once it's done, if I'm not printing any more, then I remove the filament. Then I let it automatically cool down. Once it has, I try to remove the part without damaging the material on the bed too much, or at all. Sometimes you even need a tool to do this, but not this time. And here's the finished part. It's a temporary base for a Pi camera eyeball that I designed and printed. As you see, I've printed many parts with this printer, without a single problem. And so I'm confident enough in its quality to have become a GearBest affiliate. That means that if you're buying a CR10 3D printer like this one, and you want to support this YouTube channel, if you buy it using the link in the video description, I'll get a portion of the sale at no additional cost to you. And no, this video wasn't sponsored by GearBest. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more informative videos like this. You can support these videos either through Patreon or through a one-time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!